Welcome to 2012 and great to see you back. I hope this year's going to be spectacular. And when I was thinking about my New Year's resolutions, you know, everybody's got New Year's resolutions about training and that sort of stuff. I started to recall what it was like when I first got on the squash court. I didn't start playing till I was 19. Um, and I was a very good tennis player and a good athlete. So I went on the squash court and I thought I'd be really good at this too. And suddenly I found, oh my God, everything was happening so quickly that I couldn't kind of sort it out. I was missing balls, I was not in the right place, and it felt frantic. And then I realized I have to get more efficient. I have to sequence my shot. And I'm gonna give you a little idea of something that I've used, and I'm sure most of you have experienced it. Um, I want you to think about cooking dinner. What's the first decision you make? Yes, you're right. You decide what you're gonna have. It's always going to be chicken or fish. And once you've decided that, that's when you're going to go to the fridge, see what you got, maybe go to the store, go and buy the stuff. But most of the time you don't run around the store going, what am I going to have for dinner? What am I going to have for dinner? Because if you do, you're not being very efficient. It's the same on squash court. If your feet are moving, think about it like this. If your feet are moving, do you know what you're going to play? And most people say to me, no, I don't. But actually, yes, you do. <laughs> it's either if your feet are moving towards the forehand side, you're going to play a forehand. And if your feet are moving towards the backhand side, you're going to play a backhand. Get your racket back somewhere useful. Notice I said useful. We'll go into that on some other show. But if you could just think of that idea, if your feet are moving, you know whether you're going to play a forehand or a backhand you're not sure whether you're going to play it straight across court. That's incidental. You know it's going to be a forehand or a backhand. Get your racket back somewhere useful. Anyway, there's a thought. Um, it came from when I first started playing squash. And uh, I can tell you, it's been useful ever since then. One of my members at the club actually recommended a book for me. His name's Geordie. And he suggested that I look for this book. Eat Right for Your Type. Now I didn't know this book and it's been out for nearly 20 years but it's got some fascinating information in there about your blood type and about the sort of food you can eat. Now I'm not saying it's right or wrong but I certainly think that your diet can have a considerable effect on how you feel as a person and how healthy you are and obviously as a squash player you want to feel good and you want to train at your optimum level. So if that's the case um, I'm suggesting at least give this a read. I'm not suggesting that you have to adopt it, but always there's always bits of information from everything that you, that you get that could really make a difference. And if you're struggling with any sort of idea on, on diet or, or training, that might be a resource that you can use. Well, and now we're really fortunate to have another guest, which is Sam Cornett. Uh, so Sam, welcome. Thanks, Barb. And great to see. I see you've got some decorations around your neck. So uh, what's that about? Uh, well, a couple medals from the Pan Am Games that uh, our team brought back with us to show off to our family and friends. <laughs> How nice. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. And the gold is for? The gold uh, was for the team event. Uh, we played Colombia in the finals and we won two games to zero. Fabulous. Yeah. And the silver? Uh, the silver was my individual uh, medal that I played Samantha Turan in the final and lost 3-0, but uh, I had a good experience. And then also uh, Steph and Miranda brought home a bronze in the doubles, and Miranda brought home a bronze in the individuals as well. Wow. So, so actually the women's uh, te Canadian team is doing fantastically. Yes. Um, now, while I've got, the, got you here, I wanted to take this opportunity to um, get some information out of you that the vi viewers have, have asked me. And that is, as a professional player, what do you do each day in terms of training? Like, what does your training day look like? Um, at the moment, kind of just before a competitive session, um, we've got, it's set up to be two hours in the morning and two hours in the afternoon, which usually doesn't quite turn out like that. Uh, it's probably around 90 minutes a session. 
And you, you say it's 90 minutes because of court time or just because that's the only that's as long as you can focus and keep practicing with that sort of fo intense focus? Uh, the, it's more the intensity and the focus. Once we start to feel it kind of waning, then we tend to wrap it up. And that's because you don't want to practice kind of anything that's not full on. Yeah, right? I like if it just you can accomplish so much more when you're when you're really into it and you're focused. Well, and practice is practice. You know what they say? Um, they they don't say practice to get better, right? They say practice is permanent. Yeah. All right. So whatever you practice it or how you practice is very important. Yeah. Um, so if you're doing an hour and a half session and you do two a day, then does that change in off season? Do you do more or? Um, it's the same thing with the focus, but uh, in in off season the 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 focus of the practice would be a little bit different than say it would be during during the competitive season. Um, so like for example, I would be working maybe more on technique in the off season, whereas it, like during the season we'll be working more on tactics and things like that. Okay, and in the off season, it, it, you do much harder physical training, right? Yeah, it's it's just the longer stuff, like uh, like an aerobic run, um, lots of weights, and and trying to instead of just maintaining as it is during the competitive season. In the off season, you're going to be trying to build. Yes, so yeah. you're actually trying to improve. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Very cool. Well, um, anything else you want to share with the viewers that you think would be really one one golden nugget, you know, like one gold medal nugget that you could share with the viewers that you think would be really important with regards to their training? Um, well, I mean, if you're, I guess it depends where you are in your squash, but I think something that I've learned recently is that I'm a professional and I'm trying to look at squash more as my career than as like a sport if you know what I mean like I'm trying to put in my hours as though it's a job rather than um, kind of picking and choosing so if I'm meant to do my sprints that day I do my sprints that day yes now for a recreational player what would you say with them um, something to to help improve um, hmm I think if you can go out and try a technique uh, is a good thing and I think with recreational players, tactics, technique and tactics, I think are two things that you could really focus on because if you have better tactics than someone else at the recreational level, then you're going to uh, probably pull it out in the end. <laughs> so you're obviously doing this as work mm -hmm. and the only thing I can say to you is it's clearly working. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope you have a fantastic 2012. Thanks for coming and spending the time with us and uh, we'll be following your progress. Thanks Barb. Take care. You too. And now it's time for Ask Barb. And I got a question from, again, one of my members who said to me, her name is Carolyn, and she said to me that she gets backache. And she asked if there was any way to train to prevent injury and certainly to avoid this backache. Now, I'm no doctor. All right, let's be really, really clear about this from the start. I'm no doctor and I think if you've got um, ache, pains, aches and injuries, go and see your doctor before you do anything. But from my end of it, when somebody says that sort of thing to me, it makes me think that their legs aren't strong enough. You know, in squash, we have to do a lot of lunging. We have to do a lot of stretching. We have to be stable when we are really spread. and if you're not, what tends to happen is you're going to use your back as opposed to your legs to be able to reach the ball. So when I think about that, I would suggest that you did lots of lunges, lots of weights on your legs, lots of jumping, skipping, leaping, that sort of stuff so that your legs got stronger and you were able to, to be able to maintain it. Anyway, there's my thought for the day. Go and see a personal trainer or a fitness consultant to really understand what I've said. But we're talking about thigh strength and stability when you're actually moving on the court. Well, this is Barb Cooper signing off from helpmysquashgame.com. I hope you have a fantastic year.